If you're just getting into home studio recording, it can sometimes be a little confusing of when you use your line, instrument, and even sometimes your microphone input. And most audio interfaces will have at least those three types of inputs. So in this video, I'm going to look at each of those types and when you might want to use each one so you can better understand your audio interface and get the best quality recordings possible with it. Now, first let's look at your mic input, also known as your mic level input, and we'll see what that's all about. About. The voltage generated by a microphone is the lowest of these three, so it requires a preamp to bring it up to line level. Therefore, your audio interface's mic input has a mic preamp built into it. And what you're going to connect to this type of input is your microphones, whether it's a dynamic microphone like this one or a condenser microphone that requires phantom power. Now, one thing to note is that some audio interfaces like this one have a dual purpose mic input here. So you have your microphone input that can accept an XLR cable, but also you could put a TRS cable in there for a line input. Now, if you're connecting a microphone, always use the XLR cable to connect the microphone. That way you're going into the mic preamp. If you use one of those XLR to quarter inch cables and you go into the line input, you could be bypassing the mic preamp or sometimes they put a pad on it so you're not getting the full mic preamp and then your microphone's going to be a little on the muddy side and you're not getting the best quality recordings out of your mic. Also to note about this is if you use a condenser microphone, you must use the XLR cable to connect it or else you're not going to be getting the phantom power as phantom power does not pass through the line input. So that was your mic input, pretty straightforward stuff there. Now let's look at the line level input and line devices have the highest voltage level going into your audio interface. And the things that you would connect to a line level input could be synthesizers or keyboards that have line outputs on them, mixers that have line outputs on them. There's also hardware rack gear like compressors and EQs, things that you would put in a hardware rack. Those would have line level outputs on them and more on those in just a bit, but there's also some multi-effects guitar pedals that have line level outputs on them. Even some guitar amplifiers have line level outputs on them so you can plug direct into your line level input on your audio interface and do some hybrid type of recording. And if you wanna connect home stereo gear like CD players and receivers and some amplifiers, they typically will have a line output on them as well. And those will go into your line input. So now let's go back to the external rack gear like the EQs and hardware compressors, that sort of thing. And the reason why I wanna go back to this is because there can be two types of line levels. There's consumer and pro. So consumer level is typically going to be all of your home stereo equipment that has line levels on it. And most small format mixers are going to have your consumer line level format on them, things like that. And typically your multi-effects guitar pedals are going to be consumer level. And just so you know, consumer level is minus 10 dBV. So what is professional line level? Well, this is plus four dBU, and it's typically going to be your more professional rack gear. So the higher end rack gear is typically going to output that plus four dBU. Now, some audio interfaces can accept both consumer and professional, and some hardware gear will also output to both consumer or professional level. Some of them do it better and it will automatically detect, or some will have a little switch or button on them that you'll have to push in to select. So keep this in mind if you plan on purchasing some rack gear and other types of gear. Have a look at your audio interface. Does it accept the plus four dBU or does it only accept the consumer level minus 10 dBV? You can always look at the specs in your owner's manual to see that type of information or just do a quick Google search for your audio interface and see what it's capable of handling for your line inputs. Now next, let's look at the instrument level. And this one can be really confusing because you'll have things like synthesizers and keyboards and those output to line level. So you might think that they're instruments, so let's plug it into the instrument input. But typically your instrument input's going to be for electric and bass guitars. Also some guitar effects stomp boxes will output to instrument level as well. Just be sure to check the specs on the stomp box before you plug it into either instrument or your line input. And now another important thing to note is that some audio interfaces like this one have a switch or a button that you can switch between your line input or your instrument input. So if you're plugging an instrument 
instrument into this, make sure it's switched or the button's pushed so it's on instrument. And if you're using a line level device, make sure it's switched to line. Now check out how to set up your audio interface by clicking the video on the screen. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching for Audio Tech TV. I'm Zane, keep creating, and we'll talk soon.